Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be talking about a very popular product and getting a lot of questions about this. What are options, straddles, and strangles? So if you're interested in this topic and want to learn about what they are, how to use them, when to use them, why to use them, and whether you should be a buyer or seller of options, straddles, and strangles, then you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. So let's go. <music> Hey everyone, I'm Lee Lowell, founder of SmartOptionSeller.com, an options website to help you up your game as an option trader. So as I said, and you can see right here on the screen in front of you, let me move myself over here. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about straddles and strangles today. We're going to look at some definitions. We're going to look at some option chains. We're going to look at some P&L charts. We're going to look at some option graphs as well. And we're going to do some calculations and show you why and how to calculate options, straddles and strangles, why you want to use them, when to use them. And it is it more beneficial to be a buyer or seller of an option straddle and strang or strangle. So let's just jump right in and talk about what they are. And we will go from there. So as I usually do, I have these cheat sheets here. The smart option seller guide to straddles and strangles this is what we do each week. So for those of you you know, that may not know yet, you know, options come in two flavors, calls and puts. And most of the time people use them for directional types of trades. So if you're bullish on a stock, you may buy a call option. If you're bearish on a stock, you may buy a put option. And conversely, you can be a seller as well. So if you're bearish on a stock, you could sell a call option. All right. If, um, <clears throat> if you're bullish on a stock, you can sell a put option. That's something that we do here at the smart option. So we specifically sell put options, but there are times when, you know, there's a stock out there, you're looking at the stock chart and you're thinking, you know what, I think this stock's going to move really big, but I'm not sure which direction it may move in. And you can use as a buyer, you can buy an option straddle or strangle that, that could pay off for you if the stock moves big in either direction. So what you'll be doing as a buyer, you'll be buying both a call option and a put option at the same time, hoping that the stock's going to move big in one direction or another. And if the stock does move far enough in the right time frame, then you can be a winner as a buyer of an option straddle or strangle. Now, on the other side, as a seller, you can sell an option straddle or a strangle, which means you're going to sell both the put and the call hoping that the stock doesn't really go anywhere and the option values for each to put in the call get smaller and smaller, meaning you can buy the whole straddle or strangle back and lock in a profit. So there's two sides of the coin here. Some people like to buy straddles because they just don't know where the stock's going to go, but some people like to sell straddles and strangles because they know the stock's not going to go anywhere and they can make a profit by the time decay value of those option contracts. So let's just talk about a little bit, you know, what they are. A straddle is set up right here. I'm talking at the top line here. A straddle is set up where you can buy or sell the same strike prices using the same expiration date. So if the stock's at 100, you're going to use the 100 strike call and the 100 strike put, and they're both going to be using the same expiration date. And for a strangle, you're typically going to use you know, an out of the money call and put option. So if the stock's at 100, you're going to buy or sell the 110 call strike and the 90 put um call strike you can buy or sell that so we're going to look at some some option charts to show you what that actually looks like when you buy or sell it um so let's just talk a little bit about the risks and rewards here because some people don't understand you know why you would want to be a buyer or seller of each now as a buyer of an option, whether you buy a single option or a spread or a straddle or strangle, when you're a buyer of an option, you have unlimited reward potential to however high or however low the stock can go. If you get the direction right, your, your reward is unlimited and your risk is capped and limited, meaning whatever you pay for the option or options is that's the most that you can lose. You can never lose more than what you pay for the options. Now, on the flip side, the seller of option contracts have unlimited risk potential meaning if the stock moves against you you have unlimited risk potential which is not a great thing and you only have limited reward potential so whatever you sell the option for whether you sell one option or a spread or a straddle or strangle the most you can ever win when you sell an option is whatever you collected 
or whatever the option buyer paid you, but you have unlimited risk. So you may be asking, why would someone want to have unlimited risk when trading options? Well, because a lot of the times the probability of winning is very high. What we like to do with the smart ops sales, we like to sell put options, but we know uh, as a first stock, it can't fall any further than zero. So when we sell a put option, what we're basically doing is obligating ourselves to buy a specific stock at a specific price. And we know what our, our maximum risk is. The stock can't go any lower than zero. So we know what, what we can potentially lose. On the upside, we never, ever, ever sell naked call options, meaning we just never sell call options because the stock could go up forever and we have unlimited loss potential. So if you're if you're thinking about selling straddles or strangles, you want to be very, very careful because your, your risks and loss could be unlimited. So just want to get that out there up front. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, so, so most people would think, well, they just want to be a buyer. But a lot of times buying options fails miserably, like up to 95% of the time. If you have no idea where the stock's gonna go or you, do, you choose the wrong expiration date, you could be throwing good money after bad money, just trying to figure out where the stock's going to go. You buy straddle, meaning you're going to buy both call and a put, and they both end up expiring worthless. You're going to end up losing a lot of money. So that's why people like to sell options because they have, they're, they're taking advantage of the, these option buyers that have no clue about what they're doing. So option selling does have its advantages. All right. The one thing that you need to know is that if you're going to buy a straddle or a strangle, you have to have a catalyst for that. And I'm, I'm right here. You need to know that this stock is going to move and it's going to move fast and soon. And that's the only reason why you would be a buyer of an option. Because if the stock doesn't move, that option is just going to start wasting away and you're going to start losing money. The value of that option is going to start decreasing. As, a, and, and, uh, as the holder or the buyer of that option, you're just going to be holding on to something that's losing value. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of catalyst that you know somehow for some reason the stock's going to move and it's going to move quick. And that's the reason why you want to buy options or buy straddles, whatever. And we're going to look at a scenario where a lot of people end up buying straddles or strangles right before a stock announces their earnings. Because typically after a company announces earnings, the stock will usually rise or fall pretty quickly. That's why people will concentrate on buying straddles or strangles right before an earnings announcement. We're going to look at some numbers there as well. All right. So right down here, buyers typically use this strategy for earnings. Um, but at the same time, there's always there, there's always a caveat here. Before earnings comes out, the volatility of those options start to increase, meaning those option prices get a lot more expensive because everybody's clamoring to buy puts and calls because they don't know which way the stock's going to move after earnings. So all that buying pressure increases the prices of those options. And once the earnings announcements come out, we know where the stock's going to go. All that volatility gets taken out of the options called volatility crush. So all those high prices as an option buyer you paid right before earnings gets deflated and all that value comes out regardless of where the stock moves all that volatility comes out so the option prices deflate after earnings so you have you're fighting with that as well that's another reason why option sellers like to sell straddles and strangles because they like to take advantage of that volatility crush okay so if you bought an option for five dollars a contract right before earnings and then tomorrow when the earnings come out that option could be worth three dollars just due to the fact that the, the announcement is now known and we know what the earnings are. So you got to be careful of that as well. All right. And the other thing you can do is you can use a probability calculator to help you figure out, you know, what are the chances of the stock moving, you know, to X point higher or lower in the future based on the current volatility and, and the, you know, the past movement of the stock. And we'll pull up the calculator and show you that. Now, lastly, one thing I want to say here is that, you know, if you want to sell options, um, you know, because you want to take advantage of a stock not moving or you want to take advantage of that volatility crush, using iron condors is probably a, a, a safer strategy, I should say. Condors are selling a call spread and a put spread at the same time. You're taking advantage of a, of a range of a stock moving in. So that's another discussion for another day. And lastly, we're going to use a, a website called optioncreator.com to show us um, you know, what the, the payoff graph looks like for a straddle and strangle. So let's just go on to the next phase here. We're going to look at, let's open up a chart here. We're going to look at 
um, using Disney, Walt Disney as our example. Okay. So typically what you would want to do, you want to pick a stock that has the potential to move really far, really quickly in the near future. Now, by looking at charts, how do you do that? Well, typically, as I said, you can do it right before earnings if you want, because you know the stock's going to move big uh, one way or the other, typically. Okay. Or the other thing you can use, if, if you see a stock kind of um, not really going anywhere for a while, you can see Disney has some good movement, you know, up and down. But it, right here, it has this little little period of congestion, meaning that the, the ranges that the stock trades in is getting tighter and tighter. And that means soon, at some point, the stock should explode higher or lower. So you're banking on, you're going through your charts and you're looking for charts that have like a consolidation period. And then you know eventually Disney's gonna explode one way higher or lower. Now that could be, you know, they could be waiting for Disney's earnings to come out or there's some other catalyst uh, that it that Disney's going to be making an announcement in the near future. We just don't know what that is. The other thing that you can look for on charts is something called a congestion pattern. So we can draw this here and we can draw this here. So that's typically what's called a congestion pattern where the stock kind of gets, like I said, in tighter and tighter ranges. It creates this uh, triangle pattern, which once it gets to the apex here, it'll blast out higher or lower one way or the other. So a lot of people will look at charts, they'll look for these congestion patterns, and then they'll buy a straddle, hoping that the stock's gonna move really big one way or the other, okay? So let's go to the option chain for Disney and take a look at some of the numbers, uh, how you figure out you know, what a straddle will cost you or a strangle and whether you wanna be a buyer or seller of it. So we're in the interactive brokers option chain here. I've got my Disney, chart uh disney option chain pulled up we've got put options on the right call options on the left now these are leftover prices from yesterday's trading action uh april 14th 2023 and typically most people when they buy a straddle or strangle they use you know the at the money or near the money options so with disney trading right around 100 dollars a share what we would do is we go to the 100 strike so we got the 100 puts here and the 100 calls over here and we're going to use a you know use a, an expiration like three months in the future, July, 2023, 97 days until that expiration. Now, if, if you're unsure about where the stock may be going, you probably want to give yourself some more time for the stock to move because Disney can keep meandering, you know, sideways for a while without any action. So if you choose shorter term expiration options, those things are going to decay real, really fast on you and you're going to lose money quickly as an option buyer. So as an option buyer, you want to probably give yourself a little more time for the stock to move. So we're looking at, the, you know, these July options. 100 puts are worth about, you know, $5.50 per contract. And the 100 calls are worth about six seventy per contract. And you're going to be buying both of them as an option buyer. So that's roughly um, $5.50 and six seventy. It's $12.20 per straddle. So it's $1,220. So the cost to you as an option buyer is $1,220 and to buy the put and the call, 100 strike. So at this point, you know that Disney needs to move either $12.20 higher or $12.20 lower in order for you just to break even as the option buyer, okay? So $12 higher is gonna be $112 a share and $12 lower is gonna be about $88 a share. Do you think Disney can move $12 higher or lower in the next 97 days in order for you just to break even? Okay, Disney needs to move farther than those levels in order, you, in order for you to start making money as the option buyer, all right? So what we wanna do is <clears throat> we wanna take a look at, we can go to, um, let's pull up a screen here. Okay, this is our free put selling ebook. We'll talk about that later. Um, we want to go to our option chart here. So I want to bring everyone up to speed on a website called optioncreator.com. You can see it up here, optioncreator.com. Good basic website to help you put in any kind of option strategy you want. You can fill in the numbers here and it'll pump out the graph right here. So I'm going to walk you through an example of how to create an option straddle 
example okay we're talking about disney but it doesn't really matter you can all you need is the numbers so the current stock price is 100 and we're going to buy here one contract of both the the call and the put at the 100 strike at the money 97 days to expiration we're going to use a volatility of roughly 30 percent that's typically where where disney's been trading and it's going to come up with the the option prices now in this case you can see the, the full value of the call and the put added together is roughly $12.29, a little bit more expensive than what we calculated at $12.20. Doesn't matter regardless. So you come down here and it'll, and once you hit enter after you put in all, you can, you can change all these numbers here. Okay. Once you type in a new number, just hit enter and it'll adjust the chart below. So we scroll down. So this is what a payoff graph of an option straddle looks like. It looks like a V, okay? And at the apex of the V right here is the strike price, 100, okay? The, your worst case scenario as an option straddle buyer is for the stock to finish that expiration right at the strike price, meaning right at 100 in this example. If Disney finishes at $100 at expiration 97 days from now, both the call and the put option will have a zero value. It'll expire worthless and you'll lose the maximum you can lose, which is the $1,220. Now, as you can see, as the graph moves up, as the stock price goes down or as the stock price goes up, you can see now your profit starts to get unlimited in either direction. Okay, so you're hoping for Disney to move. Your break even would be right around 112 uh, 112 and change as we discussed or 88 uh, as we discussed so you can look at the prices down here at 88 dollars the curve starts to move above the zero line meaning you're starting to move into profit above 112 or so now you're starting to move into profit so you need to make sure that disney is going to move 12 dollars or more than 12 dollars in either direction in order for you to make money so you can see the graph here now the blue line is is today if you were execute the the trade today this is what your p l would look like but at at expiration which is what you really care about where where you would make or lose money now you're gonna lose money if um if disney finishes between 88 to 112 dollars anywhere in between that level you're gonna lose various amounts uh, various amounts of money down in this range but it has to get below 88 or above 112 in order for you to make money now a strangle, we'll look at a strangle here. A strangle is just using slightly out of the money strike prices. So here the, the, the call, we use the 110 call, the 110 call, and we'll use the uh, 90 put slightly out of the money. Hit enter. Now you can see it's only $4.88 roughly. So it'll cost you $488. Strangle will cost less because the stock is going to need to move further in order for you to make a profit as an option buyer, as the, the strangle buyer. So if we scroll down to the chart here, you can see you can lose money in a bigger range between 90. If, if Disney finishes between 90 and 110 in that $20 range on expiration, you're going to lose the maximum. You're going to lose the total amount that you put into the trade, which is $488. Okay. And you can see where it starts to bend it'll cross that zero zero dollar amount at your break evens so if the cost is 488 dollars that's going to be your break even is going to be 110 which is the strike price strike price but plus 488 so 114 dollars and 88 cents is your break even on the upside and on the downside you take 90 minus 488 which is $85.12 roughly. So Disney has to fall below $85 and change in order for you to make money, or it has to get up to a, a, above 114 and change in order for you to start making money. So the strangle has a wider, um, a wider area in order for you to make a, a profit. Disney has to move further in order for you to make a profit, but it'll cost you less. So you have to decide. Do I want to pay more and ha but have a wider opportunity, uh, a wider area where, where I need Disney to move in order to make money? Or do I want to pay more in a straddle, but my, my profit area uh, is easier to get to? So you have to figure out what's better for you. Now, 
you can always change the strikes. You can you can do the you know the 105 call and the 95 put. Hit enter. Now it costs a little more, but you can see that your range of profitability um, it, it gets smaller. That means Disney doesn't have to move as far in order for you to start making money. So you have to figure out. Now, can Disney really move that far? You know, am I buying something that has no chance of even occurring? So on the flip side, now let me show you what it looks like for an option seller. So here we're going to sell and we're going to go back to the straddle. We're going to do the 100 strikes. So as an option seller, straddle seller, you're going to collect the $1,220. But here's what your payoff diagram looks like. If, if Disney or the stock finishes at 100 at expiration, you're going to make the maximum, which is $1,220. But if Disney starts to move bigger in either direction, you're, you're starting to lose money. Okay, unlimited amount of money, at least as high as Disney can go. We know Disney can't go lower than $0, but that still would be a massive loss uh, for you, even so. So you have to be sure yourself as an option seller. Do I think Disney can move out of that $12 range, higher or lower, in the next 97 days? You know, that's something that you have to think about. And uh, so your profitability zone is quite small, uh, you know, between, nine, uh, between 88 and 112. Disney gets out of those either range, you're going to start losing money in either direction. Okay, so let's look at the, let's look at the, um, the strangle for the option seller. Now, as an option seller for a strangle, you have a little bit wider profitability zone because Disney has to move further in either direction in order before you start to lose money. So now you have that uh, area of about, you know, 114 to 85 before you start losing money. Still unlimited uh, losses on the either direction. It, big moves in either direction. You're losing money as an option seller. But now the question is, you know, what are the chances of that happening? What are the chances of Disney moving that far in either direction? So that's where we go to the um, probability calculator. Is this my probability calculator? Yep, got it right here. This is the smartopsandsell.com probability calculator. So we're, we, I, I filled in some of the numbers here. Disney at 100, 97 days in the future, and we'll look at... Um, We'll use the 30% volatility. So here is where I put in the, the upper and lower thresholds for the straddle. Um, it was, you know, $87.80 on the downside. You know, we're using $12.20 as our um, cost of the straddle. So you, you, you take $12.20 and add it to the 100 strike and take $12.20 and subtract it from the 100 strike. Okay, so that's 87.80 on the downside and 112.20 on the upside. And when we hit go, you're going to see here that the probability of, of Disney, in this case, finishing below 87.80 is about a 20% probability. And the chance of it finishing above 112.20 is, is almost 23%. Okay, so you as an option buyer or option seller, you have to figure out, is this 20% and 23% you know, too little or too much for me um, to, to take that trade? As the option buyer, is 20% en enough of a chance for you to say, I'm willing to spend $1,220 to see if Disney gets above or below these levels? Does 20, 20 and 23% sound like a good opportunity for you? On the flip side, for the option seller, there's only a 20% and 23% that Disney will actually move out of that range. So conversely, you have a, you know, an 80, you have about a 77 and an 80% chance of winning because Disney is not going to move out of that range. So you'll make some money, you know, some varying amounts of money, depending on where Disney finishes. So as an option buyer, you have 20%, 23% of winning. Option seller, you have about a 77, 78% to 80% chance of winning. So you have to weigh out, okay, are those numbers good enough for me? And it's whatever you choose. So now before earnings, let's talk about the earnings opportunity here. If you think that Disney's going to explode one way or the other, you can buy, you can buy um, Disney's straddle or strangle right before earnings. And let's go back to the 
the option chain here. Let's let's pretend that Disney's earnings are coming out next week. And we're going to the April 21. So six days from now. So next Friday, April 21st. Now, here's a, a, a little trick to figure out, you know, how far the options market is basing or thinking that Disney is going to move um, by this Friday, April 21st. The best way you can do it is you look at the at the money straddle, which is the 100 strike put and call. And it's worth about $1.37 here and, you know, roughly $1.37 here for the calls as well. You add those two together, that's roughly $2.70 uh, uh, $2 or something like that. $2.77. That's that's how you calculate how much the option market thinks that Disney's going to move by next Friday. Okay? $2.74 or $2.75. The option market thinks that Disney's going to move that far by next Friday. Do you think Disney can move, you know, $2.70 something cents by next Friday? So that's what the at the money straddle is predicting. That's how you can use the market. So if you think, yeah, heck yeah, Disney could move that far by next Friday, then you can buy the straddle. All right. So let's go quickly back to our, our option calculator. I just want to show you how that looks. And you can get this information from the, the OIC website, optionseducation.org. You can see the website right here. So, you know, what we did was uh, let's move this down to uh, six days to expiration. Okay. This is your inputs are here. We've got $100 stock price, $100 strike price. And days to expiration, you can see a dollar fifty-seven, dollar fifty. So we're talking. This is okay. A little bit different. Three-dollar value here. And you know, if you decide to buy that option straddle, let's let's bump this up because we know that um, volatility is going to go up as earnings announcement gets closer. So let's just say it costs four dollars to buy that straddle. Two dollars for the call. Two dollars for the put. You're paying four dollars. But once earnings gets announced, all of a sudden volatility drops down to 20. And now those you've lost a dollar on the call and a dollar on the put. So you have to be aware of that volatility crush that I talked to you about. Regardless of where Disney goes, higher or lower, the volatility is still going to come in and you're going to lose money just because of that drop in the volatility. So you have to be aware of that. If you're playing options or options straddles or strangles, for expiration, you have to be aware if you buy that option or that straddle or strangle right before earnings, like the night before, before the market closes or whatever, you're going to be, you have to be aware that that volatility crush. So choose your options wisely. All right. So I think that's it for the option straddle and strangle. Let's actually, we can go to one more time, the option chain here. So how do you actually how do you actually buy or sell the straddles? Well, if you use interactive brokers, you know there's a couple ways to do it. You can actually go into the, let's go back to July here. You can actually go into the strategy strategy builder, okay? And what you would do is you can click on the ask of the put and the ask price of the call, and it'll set up this straddle order right here. It'll You're going to buy the 100 call and the 100 put, and here it costs twelve dollars and fifteen cents per straddle, which is twelve hundred and fifteen dollars. Here is the chart, little chart that I showed you about before. Or if you use the home screen like I do, and I put in some of these numbers before, you can actually go ahead and create the straddle and strangle right here. Which for some reason um, the strangle price is not showing up, but you can add the numbers here, and it'll give you the full price. All right. So there's a couple different ways that you can create it within interactive brokers. All right. So that's all for me today. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's giving you an idea of what straddles and strangles are all about. You know, whether you want to be a buyer or seller, whether the probabilities are good for you, how much it'll cost, the P&L graphs, the option charts. You know, you can use all these things to help you figure out whether you want to be a buyer or seller. As I said, let's go back to the the cheat sheet here if you're gonna if you're gonna sell these things you may want to consider the iron condors instead these are double double it's a call spread and a put spread that you sell together you have locked in limited risk so those are a little bit safer all right so lastly 
Let's go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. And I want to make sure everyone gets a free copy of our Put Song Basics ebook. That's what we concentrate on here at the smartoptionseller.com. You can scroll down and put in your name and email address here. You do this at our website, smartoptionseller.com. All right, that's all for me today. Hope this has been helpful. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you wish. Send me an email. I will always answer. All right, that's it for me today. This is Lee Lowell signing off.